Breaking objects, simulating fluids, and setting up explosions in Blender all come with their own challenges. So whether you are trying to get a wall to fracture in a specific way, or make a liquid behave realistically, or get an explosion to look right without spending hours tweaking parameters, there is always some trial and error involved. But B3FX Studios have four great add-ons, which are Fracture Lab, Fluid Lab, VDB Lab, and RBD Lab, that focus on these types of simulations. Each one of them is designed to handle a different part of the process, from breaking objects to handling physics, fluids, and volumetric effects. But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the Blender market is going over a huge winter sale right now, with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, modifier setups, courses, and more. And by the way, if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best Blender add-ons out there. Without further ado, let's jump right in. You see, Blender's built-in tools allow objects to be fractured, but they don't always offer enough control. The default fracture methods tend to generate random breaking patterns, which may or may not fit what is needed for a scene. If a more structured fracture is required, such as cracks following a specific pattern, it often takes additional manual work. Another issue is that, once a fracture is applied, modifying it later isn't always that fun. That's why we have Fracture Lab which addresses all these limitations by allowing both controlled and random fracturing, with an option to edit fractures at any stage. The ability to adjust fracture resolution is particularly useful, so instead of immediately committing to a highly detailed fracture which can slow down a scene, it is possible to start with a low resolution version and refine it later. This makes it easier to test different breaking patterns without affecting performance too much. And for large projects where multiple fractures may be involved, this flexibility can be a significant advantage. Another feature is the damage module, which helps simulate natural wear and tear. Clean fractures often don't look realistic, especially on materials like stone, concrete, or aged wood. And these modules allow for rougher edges and surface imperfections to be added making objects look fractured as opposed to those clean, perfect cuts. This reduces the need for additional sculpting or texture work. And in my opinion, this can be really helpful, especially when working under time constraints. Fracture Lab also includes multiple ways to generate fractures. You see, you can define exact break patterns by manually placing cuts or let the tool generate randomized fractures. And if the goal is to create destruction in a constructed way, such as simulating cracks before something collapses, this level of control can make the process easier. In addition, new features can be layered on top of existing ones. And this is important because it makes it possible to add more detail without starting over. Also, one aspect that can be expanded upon is the number of built-in fracture presets. While it is possible to create custom patterns, having more ready-to-use fracture types could speed up the workflow. That being said, the ability to edit fractures after they have been applied makes it more flexible compared to Blender's default system. But fracturing objects isn't just one step in the destruction effect. Once an object is broken apart, it still needs to interact with gravity and external forces. An RBD lab can be the tool to simplify this process. In Blender, setting up rigid body physics manually can be time consuming, especially when dealing with objects that have many small pieces. An RBD lab can simplify this by providing an automated workflow that can guide you through the process. And by the way, RBD Lab is a tested and true add-on that can really help you with rigid bodies. In fact, I believe it is a top add-on in this field right now. As you know, things start by fracturing an object usually, similar to Fracture Lab. After that, RBD Lab allows you to define constraints, set object mass, and control how pieces respond to different forces. A key part of the system is the glue feature which determines how much force is required before fractured pieces start to separate. So, instead of everything breaking apart instantly, objects can be set to hold together until a strong enough force is applied. This can be useful for simulating different materials, like wooden beams for example, which might bend and crack before fully breaking, while a concrete structure might hold its form until a specific threshold of stress is actually met. 
The add-on also includes tools for adding debris and dust effects. So when something breaks in reality, there are usually small particles and fragments that scatter upon impact. And these details help destruction effects look more natural by manually setting up secondary particles, which can take time. And having debris and dust integrated into the add-on makes it easier to include these elements without having to set them up separately. Another feature of RBD Lab is the ability to fine-tune the way pieces interact with each other before breaking. You see, the glue system can be adjusted so that certain areas hold together longer than others, making it possible to create fractures that spread gradually instead of breaking all at once. And this adds an extra step of realism, particularly for structures like walls or bridges that need to crumble over time rather than collapse immediately. One thing to keep in mind when using RBD Lab is that mass settings play a big role in how objects behave. If an object's mass is too low, it might not respond correctly to external forces. If it is too high, it could break apart too easily or fall too quickly. And the atom provides tools for fine-tuning mass values, but getting them right often requires some testing. And the same applies to how constraints are set up. If pieces are held together too strong, they might not break when expected, and if they are too weak, they might separate too soon. But if you are interested in simulating something that is not solid, you probably want to take a look at Fluid Lab, which focuses on fluid simulations. As you know, Blender already includes Mentaflow, but setting up a Mentaflow simulation requires defining a domain in addition to tweaking multiple parameters and often going through a long bake process, which takes time before getting some usable results. But Fluid Lab takes a different approach by using Blender system, which is called Smooth Particle Hydrodynamics, allowing fluids to be simulated without the need for a domain. The way emitters are handled makes setting up a fluid simulation fairly simple. An object can be set as an inflow emitter, which continuously generates liquid or as geometry, where fluid is released all at once. There are also parameters for viscosity, particle size, and emission rate, which control how liquid behaves. One of the most noticeable limitations is that different fluid types don't seem to interact properly. So if two different fluids, like water and honey, are added to the same scene, they don't mix in a way that looks actually natural. This might improve, however, in the future updates, but for now, it is better suited for cases where only one type of fluid is needed. Fluid Lab also includes a built-in shading system with presets for water, honey, and oil. And since Blender's native fluid simulation often require additional shader work, I mean to look good, having these as a starting point makes it easier to get visually appealing results without extra adjustments. For now, we have talked about solid and liquid simulations. But what about other phenomenons that require gaseous simulations? And that's why we're going to talk about VDB Lab, which is designed for volumetric effects like explosions, fire, and smoke. Naturally, setting up these in Blender requires a combination of open VDB files, physics settings, and shader adjustments. But VDB Lab organizes this into a guided workflow that covers everything from defining the shape of an explosion to controlling how it evolves over time. And the add-on includes several presets, such as gas explosions, fireballs, and smoke plumes. This serves as starting points that can be customized by adjusting parameters like density, dissipation, and vorticity. There are also shader controls for tweaking fire intensity and smoke behavior, making it easier to modify the look of an explosion without having to build a shader from scratch. And since volumetric effects tend to be computationally heavy, performance can be an issue. So lowering the resolution while working and increasing it before rendering is one of the ways to handle this. And while VDB Lab simplifies a big part of the process, getting the exact result needed still requires adjusting multiple settings, especially for more complex effects. The guided approach does actually help in understanding how explosions and fire behave. But for someone who hasn't worked with volumetrics before, it provides a structured way to go through the process without having to figure out everything manually from scratch. And there you have it, guys. If you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.